Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, to you, those of you asking if I'm channeling my inner Tim Pool, no, I'm channeling a 50-degree bus until my fire in the morning gets going, and bald heads lose a lot of heat. So it's either the beanie or you got to put up with, like, the the Jedi, you know, Obi-Wan uh, Jedi Master look, so you're just going to have to deal with a beanie. Uh, it's also why I grow my beard back in for the wintertime, a good facial covering, and it makes me, you know, it hides my ugly face, makes me look pretty and masculine. I shave with an axe like you see on the thumbnail. Uh, so tonight, we're going to, or today, this morning, it tells you how often I do my videos at night, we're going to talk about toxic masculinity and the war on men and how uh, basically if, 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 there is no such thing, and I've talked about this literal phrase I said in another video, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. There can be a man that does something bad, like being over-aggressive or, or being uh, easily angered. That's not manly. That's just being easily ang uh, angered. That's just losing your cool. Guess what? Women do that too. So a woman that gets really angry really easy, B slash itch, we might call her some bad names, but we don't call her toxic, toxic feminism, toxic masculinism. No, nope, it's just that's a bad acting woman. So they try to, again, make this into something that is a, a, a pool. So let's get started on the, the first article I'm starting with is from Scientific American. Here's the first article I'm going to read, and I'll, you'll see why I'm talking about this in a moment. Here's the first article I'm going to read from Scientific American. So now our science is starting to take this stuff up. And and, it, and I've seen many, many articles where science has written things about, look, we did a study on X between between men and women. And when the result didn't come out to what the, the girl power advocates liked, they pressured them to either remove the study or say we were in error and we should have done more research. This is not good. Now you're having this, this wokeness change what science says. And once we start going down this path, we're in a lot of trouble. So uh, Scientific American says how to fight toxic masculinity. The code of toxic masculinity requires that men are dominant over everyone else, have no needs, show no emotion, and are always winning. Now, I don't know about you. I think of this as a pretty male space here. Uh, a male corner of YouTube and, and the internet. How many times do we talk about the code of what we, we do and how we should be dominant and how uh, we don't? We, now, do we talk about having no needs? Yes, it's called stoicism. Do we talk about showing no emotion? Yes, it's called stoicism. Can you imagine if, if one of our, our presidents, Abraham Lincoln or uh, George Washington got up there and said, oh, I'm so proud of this country and uh, I, I'm just, I don't want to go to war. I just, uh, duh. you would instantly lose respect for any man that does that because they're showing that they're not strong. They're not a provider. They're not a leader. They're not a, uh, a pillar of strength. You see, now I made my eyes all red. They're not a pillar of strength. And that's what we want from leaders. But now they're talking about, hey, if you have these qualities, if you're if you have no needs, and you live simply, and you, and you're you're not providing, and you're just looking out for yourself, and you're showing no emotion, well, you see now you're toxic. She goes on. She goes on to say, you know, ask ask a fish how to be a fisherman, right? Toxic masculinity is best described as a box. It's narrow, rigid, and men have to contort themselves to fit in it. To fit in the man box of toxic masculinity, a man must live by a particular set of beliefs and behaviors. Suffer pain in silence. Have no needs. Never lose. Show no emotion other than bravado or rage. Don't depend on anyone. Don't do anything that could be construed as weakness. Never snitch. Okay, let's, let's quickly go over these one by one. Suffer pain in silence. No. You just don't whine about it to the world. You talk to a friend. Uh, you maybe go see a counselor or a therapist or somebody if you need some help. Or you come here and, and get some information and process through it by yourself. Again, when, when, you, when you go out and scream to the world that, that you're unhappy and you're, you're crying, yes, it is weakness. And men do not want to be seen as weak. It has nothing to do with toxic anything. It has to do with wanting to be a man. And part of, you know, women like being feminine and pretty and smelling nice and looking nice. Well, men like to be strong. Men like to be grounded. 
there's nothing wrong with that. Having no needs. Uh, I don't know about you. My bus is warming up finally. Uh, I don't know about you, but having no needs is fine. Why should I be needy? Needy is unattractive in anyone. So men not wanting to be needy is a bad thing all of a sudden. It's toxic. Uh, never lose. Hey, men don't like to lose, period. Um, it, but it's okay if we do. Again, most of the time when men lose, hey, they, they buck it up. They uh, Many of us have lost in relationships or other things. We look for a way around it. We look a, for a way to win. We look for a way to feel better about it. We don't sit and whine about it. Show no emotions other than bravado or rage. I disagree. I think it's better to show other emotions than bravo, bravado or rage. Don't show rage. Don't show bravado. Show happiness. Show civility. Show kindness. Show, but you don't, again, no crying, no whining. Instead of crying and whining, we deal with a problem. We learn how to fix it and go, go around it. Don't depend on anyone. We're looked at as providers. And we can't, who can we depend upon? If we depend upon a woman, it's unattractive to her. And many times she'll leave, leave us because we're losers. If we depend upon the government, we can't depend upon the government because the government's too busy taking care of women, you see. Men are supposed to look at the homeless rates, look at uh, the injuries in the workplace, look at the military, look at the problems we have with getting vets health care. Yeah, men don't get anybody to look after them, so we can't depend on anyone. Don't do anything that could be construed as weakness. Right. Why would we want it? Why would anyone want to do something that looks weak? No one wants to do that, period. So how can that be toxic to to not want to be weak? See, again, they're trying to take away being manly, being strong, being intelligent, being outgoing, being confident. They want to strip that away from men. Why? Because it makes them easier to manipulate, you see. Um, they say a man box also requires that men buy an original hierarchy in which straight men are dominant over everybody else. Furthermore, among straight men, the man box decrees that hypermasculine men are dominant over men who reject or find themselves outside the box. Again, this is an outright lie. Many of you viewers here are married. Some of you are women. About uh, almost 10% now are women. Some of you have stated, hey, I'm, I'm a gay guy. Welcome aboard. Um, there's no, there is no color, no creed, no religious standing, no um, sexual proclivity. None of those are any better or worse. I mean, some of you may have your opinions on this, but in my, hey, you are who you are. You let your flag fly, okay? But if you're a man or if you want to be supportive of men, okay, I'm not saying that there's anybody better or anything worse. But again, here... They make it sound like, you know, if you're a straight man, you, the box says you have to be a certain way. Uh, if you don't fit in the man box, you pay the price. At, be be at best, you risk invisibility. At worst, you ri risk disrespect, bullying, or even harm. Disagree. Men in general risk invisibility, disrespect. So how can a man wanting to not be disrespected Again, oh, so I'm going to leave this article. I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit into it, but I've got a lot of topics and I don't want to go way long. So I'm going to leave this from the Scientific American. Please read it because the definition that they give is completely made up. You can tell, you can tell that they're just making this stuff, stuff up in a, in, a, in a way to paint men a certain direction. The next one I want to talk about. Uh, this is, is very recent. I think it's now, uh, oh, it's as of today. This is a new article on today in Front Page Magazine. The War on Manly Men, Why the Left, and I'm going to say progressives, is so heavily invested in reversing traditional roles. And of course, we have Harry Styles here in his dress looking all pretty. Pink's a good color for him, I will say. After what was widely touted in the media as a history-making appearance, Vanderbilt University female soccer player turned football kicker Sarah Fuller was recently named Special Teams Player of the Week by the Southeastern College Football Conference along with Florida University player Kedarius Tony. What did Fuller do to earn this honor? She took the opening kickoff of the second half against the Tigers as her perfectly executed perfectly executed kick sailed 30 yards and was downed at the Missouri 35 yard line. The SEC crowd uh, crowed in explanation. Now, for those of you that are not American football fans, let me just explain this. The team that lost uh, Vanderbilt university, they lost, I think it was 41 or 45 to zero. The team got crushed. The player, the head coach got fired. 
Now this this gal that they they brought out here was a soccer player and they had her do one kick. Now when they say it sailed 30 yards, 30 yards is not a very long kick at all. As a matter of fact, in most punts, uh, it's considered short. And when you kick off, especially when you're down, uh, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't do a squib kick. Uh, you, you might do an onside kick, which is a very 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 short kick, hoping to get the ball back. But you don't do a squib kick. A squib kick is done to either a make sure the other team doesn't run it back, which you wouldn't bother at the first half of or the first play of the second half. Long story short, she really kicked a nothing kick. I'll just leave it at that. That's it. They continue on. That's it. That was the field. She was on the field for one play, not for a high pressure game clinching field goal, but for a low line drive of a kickoff that, quote, sailed a mere 30 yards. In all fa fairness, this kick was intended to be a short, was intended to be short in order to prevent a run back. But apparently, as a soccer goalie, longer kicks aren't her, her strong suit. The short kickoff was designed for her because that's what she's used to striking, the head coach later tried to explain to reporters. And perfectly executed? Perfectly executed is the standard, not the exception with kickoffs. One perfectly executed kickoff is not an award-winning achievement unless the kicker, of course, is a woman. What would have happened if Vanderbilt's opponents had returned the kick? Football is not a contact sport. The late Michigan State coach Duffy Darty is credited with quipping. It is a collision sport. At six foot two, Fuller isn't petite. Um, I've, what's her first name again? Sarah, I think. Anyway, Fuller is the the gal that kicked it off. Uh, Fuller isn't petite. It's unclear what her weight is. She's the only player on the Vanderbilt roster whose weight is not listed. Shocking. But it's a fair bet that if one of the male Missouri blockers hurling downfield at full speed after Fuller's kickoff had targeted her, or if she had tried to tackle the ball carrier, the question of whether women can compete on a truly equal footing with men in a collision sport would have been settled in just one collision. To avoid that very possibility, Fuller jogged to the sidelines immediately after her kick. So... And I don't want to get into the sports side of this too much, but she kicks it and then basically runs off the field. Why? If you've ever, if you ever type in, uh, go to YouTube and type in NFL collision or NFL big hits, you will be seeing, and a lot of them are dirty hits, but you will be seeing guys laid out. They're hit so hard that they smell last week and they're seeing next week. They get, they get leveled. If that happened to her, even if she tried to block them, what are the odds that they would have blamed the football player for playing football and just running over her? They would have said, oh, he went out of his way to punish her or uh, he should have uh, tried to avoid her or she was no threat. You, you see it happening already. This is what happens when you start doing this stuff. Powerful and brave when she does something that's meh, but if she actually tried to play and got creamed and just blasted, it would have been the male football player. This is why we're getting into these problems. This is why so many men, the toxic men, we're not fighting stuff. We're getting out of it. We're leaving it. We're leaving it behind. Anyway, they go on to say, meanwhile, our co-player of the week, Kadarius Tony, returned a punt 50 yards for what proved to be the decisive touchdown of the game as his Florida team defeated Kentucky. And yet Fuller's inconsequential kick in a game in which her team was massacred 41-0 earned her equal billing with Tony. This seems suspiciously like affirmative action and virtual signaling, although the head coach tried to distance himself from it as such. And like I said, he got, he got uh, fired. Okay, let me jump on past the football portion of this. Um, in other news and other related news in another culture arena, pop star Harry Styles was celebrated this month as the first man to appear solo on the cover of Vogue magazine. In the cover photo and a fashion spread in Styles', Styles is decked out in women's clothing. I did an article on, on that. Um, let me, uh, I think that's just about all I wanted to read out of this, but ah, here it is. This may seem like a tempest in a teapot because the fashion in the fashion world. No, I don't want to read about the fashion. I'm trying to get. Uh, okay, here's what they say. The answer is that progressives are at war with anything perceived as normal and traditional. Everything that has made us in the West who we are and made us the freest, most prosperous, most accomplished, most civilized civilization in our history. Our religious beliefs, our values, our traditions, our art and literature, our history, our heroes, even our science is now either day. Uh, deemed either one of the isms or one of the phobias. Uh, oppressive, exploitative, toxic, so on and so forth. Um, over the past 
and any links to it are un unacceptably unwoke. And so progressives seek to relentlessly redefine or preferably eradicate every cultural norm in order to remake the world according to their self-righteous, allegedly, allegedly inclusive collectivist utopian vision. Um, I wanted to read that because, again, it, it seems that a, a lot of what's coming with the women's wave and the women's em empowerment and the women's kind of takeover of things is being championed by progressives because it is progressive, you see. But they're the same side that seems to unerringly attack men, men for being all these isms and men for being bad and toxic and so on and so forth. Because I do not hear a lot of conservatives coming out and saying men bad. I do hear more conservatives saying men are great and we need men and we want men and we love men because they provide for us and they protect us and they do all the things that are for us. You know, they never talk about what the guys themselves actually need. Uh, so they talk to them more as if they're a utility that helps them out. But nonetheless, they're at least supportive of them. It seems to be, for, from my, my viewing and many others, progressivisms. And if you're progressive yourself, it doesn't mean, and I'm talking to you fellows out there, if you're progressive yourself and you, and you kind of believe in some of these things, it's not saying that you're wrong. It's just saying that this kind of stuff is coming from that theater. It's just like on the conservative side, the conservatives, and again, I'm not trying to talk about the the, the uh, political part of this, but the, the conservative side is very much on, hey, get married. Hey, be married and, and have kids, and that's what life's really about, and that'll make you happy. And we also know that's not correct either. So there's both sides that I think have something wrong here. And so a lot of us are just kind of staying in the middle, trying to get through our way, and we may have our, our political leanings one way or another, but we're just trying to figure this out and get through it. And it seems that both sides, everybody seems to either want to use men or attack men or call men this or say men need to do that. How about men just want to, men don't need to be thought of as a whole. We're individuals. Men, do what makes you happy. Period. End of statement. And, and if that means dating a lot of women, great. If that means um, um, having a, uh, a wife and being married long term, great. Whatever. Just do whatever you makes you happy. But again, they try to put men in all this single pool. It's a failure. I am different than every other man out there. Mostly. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Okay, now it is time. Let me pull this up here for us. It is time for our dating profile of the day. All right, here we have a 36-year-old gal. She's got a, a chest tattoo and quite a bit of makeup on, and it looks like she's using a filter as well. I know you can't tell that because I blur these. She says, I'm a hor horribly sarcastic bee, even when not trying. So sorry, not sorry for that in advance. I'm not the skinny Barbie type, and I've come to accept that, and you should too. I'm not the one night stand or random hookup type. I'm really good at making bad choices, especially in my love life. Extremely empathic, not religious. I have my own place, car, and job. You should too. I have kids. Please have all your teeth. If you wear a uniform, come right to the front of the line. So, again, we have, you know, again, as guys are out there looking for, for profiles and they're swiping and looking for somebody to date. How about being a hor horribly sar sarcastic bee, even when I'm not trying? So that is that is a ding against you. I don't know if you're trying to sell yourself here, young lady, uh, at 36 with chest tattoos. I don't know if you're trying to sell yourself, but you're not doing well if your first thing you're doing is warning everybody how you're an awful person. She says, I'm not the skinny Barbie type. I've come to accept it, and you should too. Can you imagine in a guy's profile when women say I, he needs to be tall and athletic and, hey, you know something? I'm 5'7". I'm bald, bald with a dad bod. I've come to accept it, and you should too. That's not going to get you anywhere. Well, guess what, gals? It doesn't get you anywhere either. Uh, and she's really good at making bad choices, especially in her love life. So, I don't... And... and <laughs> I don't know about you, but when you say I'm really bad at making bad choices in my love life and then you swipe on me, if we were to match for some odd reason, like I would ever swipe yes on a person like this, does that mean that I'm a bad decision? <laughs> 
Uh, but the good news is, if she pa- bu- if she happens to bypass you, like you happen to swipe on this, which you never would, but if you did and she bypassed on you, that's okay. That means you're good because she only selects bad decisions. In other words, bad decisions being bad boys. And the last, and, and here's here's her credentials for having a guy in her life. I have my own place, car, and job. You should too. Okay, so you need to have a place to live, a car, and a job. I have kids. Okay, and here's the killer. Please have all your teeth. Please just, all I ask for is that you have all your teeth. That's that's entry level. That's that's pretty low. That's a pretty low bar to jump over if you want to date her. Have all your teeth, fellas. Uh, guys, there it is. I'll leave it at there. Um, you get the idea, though. You know, it, it, we're, 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 it always seems like we're getting a hurricane of hate down on us. Um, don't, you know, we're men, but we're all different men. We all do our own things. Different things make us happy. Don't let anybody pigeonhole you. Don't listen to it. Just do whatever makes you happy. Live, live, uh, live well. Be stoic. Learn stoicism. Uh, make sure to keep hitting, hitting the gym and uh, be just as toxic as you want to be. I don't think anybody even knows what that means. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links below as always. If you have, thank you very much. Best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. Remember, you be you. Just don't be toxic. Mm-hmm.